In this video, we're going to take a look at the controls in the Abbey Road Orchestra cellos library and what each of them do. Starting in the top left hand corner of the interface, we have the LED light, which is an indication as to whether your samples are still loading into the memory of your machine. Wait until this is solid green before you try and trigger any samples. Moving to the right is the CPU meter, which is an indication of how hard the processor on your machine is working. And to the right of this is the disk meter, which is an indication of how hard the drive you're streaming the samples data from is working. The memory meter is an indication of how much sample content you have preloaded into the RAM of your machine. The voices meter to the right is an indication of how many audio threads you're streaming at any particular one point in time. The refresh button is really useful for anything like sticking MIDI notes. Click this to refresh the instance of the plugin and you can also right click this to see some further options. In the middle of the top menu, we have the mode switching button, which is where we can change between pro and core modes if you have both of them installed. The MIDI channel drop-down menu enables you to set the plugin to respond to any 1 to 16 MIDI channels. By setting it to any, it will respond to all MIDI channels. We then have a global tuning and a global panning control, followed by a master volume. And to the right of the master volume, we have under the three dots, some preset settings. The dynamics option enables you to change the behavior of the control in the middle of the interface. By default, this is set to full velocity range, but if we click this, we can see there are some further options. So velocity map to dynamics enables you to set the short techniques to respond to the dynamics fader instead of the velocity of your keyboard, i.e. how hard or soft you hit the keys. The two compressed options enable you to use this fader as a MIDI limiter, which means you can limit the performance to only trigger one particular dynamic layer. The velocity option enables you to change how the plugin responds to the sensitivity of your MIDI controller. So, for example, if you have a controller which is really overreactive and you can trigger the loudest dynamics really easily by how hard you play, you might want to set this to exponential negative, which is where it becomes easier to then trigger the softer velocities. We then have the opposite of this, which is exponential positive. We have the linear velocity, which is the default, and then we also have a shelf velocity. The CC mappings option enables you to reset and clear the CC mappings. So if I right click the middle fader, we'll see that the MIDI assignment is MIDI CC number one. But if I decide to clear the MIDI mappings and then I select that again, we can see there is no MIDI CC assignment available to us. Uh, clicking reset will restore all MIDI CC parameters on the interface. The sync to tempo function is only available for the measured tremolos and it's worth noting that if you do turn this on it will increase the CPU usage of the library because you're constantly time stretching that sample data in real time. The voice choking roll end and soft takeover controls are only available at this time for the percussion libraries. The short releases option allows you to change how the ends of notes behave. So the timed option will allow you to release a note earlier than the actual length of the sample, and it will cut out sooner. The untimed option will trigger a release at the end of the sample, meaning that the full performance of the note will need to play out before you hear that trigger. And if you set this to none, the note will always play the full length of the performance, i.e. it will trigger like a one shot. We then have the solo latch option, which when enabled, if we go to the signal mixer, we can choose to click multiple solos and have them stack. If this was disabled, which is the default, it will cancel the previous solo. You can also stack solos by holding the shift key as a shortcut. Holding option and clicking or alt on a PC will remove 
all the solos that you have active. The purge run used function is really, really useful for anybody who uses large templates. This particular menu here only shows the status as to whether the setting is active or not. To change this setting, we need to go into the interface settings and at the bottom, we can enable eco load. What this setting enables us to do is when you load a patch, only the first technique is preloaded into the RAM of your machine, meaning that all the techniques across the bottom are not loaded into memory automatically. However, if I then decide that I want to use the Flotando articulation, if we look at the memory meter in the top when I key switch, we see the memory usage increase. And if I change to the Lyrical Legato, we'll see it increase even further. Now, once I've settled on a particular technique, I can revert the RAM usage back to only having the technique loaded by hitting the refresh button. After refresh has done its thing, what we'll notice is the lyrical legato is the only thing preloaded into memory and the memory usage has dropped down in value. Underneath this cogwheel at the top, this is where we can find all interface and plugin controls for audio settings such as preload size. I strongly recommend checking out the manual to see more about those particular settings. Moving down the interface, we then have a expand and collapse toggle. And to the left of this, we have the preset menu. So opening that with the drop down menu on the left, we can see a whole host of different options. At the top, we can filter between core and pro. So I can see either the pro patches or the core patches. And we also have a filtering system on the left hand side. So at this moment in time, I have the strings filtered, but I could then decide to swap to see metal percussion or low percussion. Um, if I favorite a sound using this star icon next to the cello's pro patch, it will then show up under the starred filter. We can press the play button to preview what a sound will be like, and we can also hover over the information icon to learn more about that particular preset. The user filter at the bottom will become populated when you save a custom preset. A custom preset can be saved using the save icon to the right of the preset bar. The left and right arrow will enable you to cycle through the presets and it will cycle through the presets within the filter system. So if I only had, for example, metal percussion selected in the filter system of the preset menu, it will only go left and right up and down the preset menu for the metal percussion patches. Moving down the interface once more, we have the expression control. Expression is a volume control which operates within the master volume in the top menu. We then have the dynamics fader, which we've already touched on, but this allows you to control the timbre and the dynamic performance of the library. The control to the right then gives us a few different options if we click the button in the middle. So by default, this is set to reverb, so we can increase this to give more reverb. But we also have vibrato, which is where we can dial in the amount of vibrato that we want. The tightness control, when increased, will cut into the start of the sample. This means it will make the shorter articulations more responsive and easier to time align to the BPM of your door when performing. It's worth noting that when you do cut into the start of the sample, um, you do make it sound more unrealistic. Um, and as such, when you've finished your performance, you should dial the tightness back and then use negative offset in your door in order to have a more realistic but in time performance. We then have a release, um, which has four different stages in this library. Um, this will allow you to uh, tighten up the ends of notes. Um, the values for release are found in the user manual and I strongly recommend checking those out. We then have the legato offset control. Again, the values for legato offset are in the user manual. Um, but what this control does is it enables you to decide how much of the legato transition you wish to hear. So when this is at zero, you will hear less of the transition. And when this is at 100%, you will hear more of the transition. Moving down the interface once more, we then have the uh, different views. So we can see here that currently we're looking at the techniques. We have the signal mixer in the middle, and then we have all the different uh, effects options at the bottom, which we've just discussed. 
To the right of the techniques, we have the technique editor, which is where we can choose to uh, remove different techniques from a patch. So for example, I might not want any short techniques and I can remove all of these. And then using these arrows at the bottom, we can see that I've removed all short techniques from the patch. Within the technique editor, similar to the preset menu, you can preview a sound, hover over the information icon to learn more about that particular sound as well. We can also drag techniques around in order to reorganize them. So for example, I can bring, if I wanted to, the legato allegro to the front of the uh, techniques. In the top right hand corner, we have a keyboard shimmier. So if I transpose the keyboard down at the bottom, this will allow me to click and drag the default key switches on the bottom to the range that I wish. We then have a padlock which locks all the preferences here in place. Moving down we then have the trigger method which is where I can decide to change the articulation switching method for that particular technique. So for example if I wanted to I could set the long extended which is currently selected to respond to CC range. So here it would be CC32, number one. However, the tremolo would still be responding to key switch. So I could set this then to CC range, number two. You can do this for all techniques. And from here, we can decide whether we wish a traditional key switch, a CC range, velocity range. So how hard or soft you hit the keys, we can set articulations to change depending on the MIDI channel that the plugin receives. We can change depending on the speed of playing, which is quite useful for things uh, like legato patches. Um, and we also have program changes. Below the trigger method, we have the activate option, which is where we can choose between a normal state of key switching and a latched state of key switching. When the key switching is latched, what it means is it means the techniques will temporarily switch to the one in latch mode and then snap back to the one you previously had selected after you've let go of that key switch. We then have the round robin options. So if I was to quickly add in some shorter techniques, such as the colenios, we can see that there are five different round robins for the shorts for this particular technique. We can decide to limit these to only one, which will give you quite a mechanical machine gun effect, or we can have it set to five. The reset on transport function um, enables the round robin cycle to uh, restart every time you hit play in your DAW. We can choose to reset uh, from a particular key. So what this will do is place key switches on the uh, bottom of the keyboard for you to specifically choose which round robin you wish to hear. So let's say, for example, there is an artifact on a particular sample, let's say a chair squeak, um, you can decide to key switch out that particular round robin. The options button allows us to make alterations to the round robin count and change the sound. So for example, if we use one of the layering options, we would get a much thicker sound to the round robins because we're stacking multiple round robins on top of each other. The neighbored zoned round robin option enables us to borrow from different notes and transpose those notes down to introduce more round robins than just the five that we have. The transpose option allows us to change the playable range of the keyboard and the two-handed layout and the right-left mapping options are again only used for the percussion patches. Changing to the signal mixer, in the top left hand corner we have the ability to save a preset and then also load a mix preset. We then have the ability to refresh the signal mixer back to its default. So turning the advanced control off gives us a simple view of the mixer. So if I decide to drag this to the close and then change back to the advanced, we'll see that only the close signal is enabled. Similar if I dial this back to the far option, we will see only the ambient signal active. We then have load toggles at the bottom, which is where we can turn on signals. And we also have, as discussed earlier, the solo mute functionality. The left and right arrows at the bottom allow us to see more signals. The global option is quite useful when setting different mixes for different techniques. So for example, for the colenios, which I've got selected here, maybe I'd like a closer sound. So I would bring in the close mic, less ambient mics and a tighter tree position. 
However, on something that's more like the Flotando, which is really quite a nice airy patch, I could dial in a ambient signal and a more ambient tree and also remove the close signal. So now if I go back to the technique switcher and I change back to the Colenios, and I go back to the signal mixer, we can see that the close mix and the tighter tree and the ambient signal is retained. So it allows us to set different signal positions depending on the technique that we have selected. We then have the stereo width controls, which enables us to collapse the close signals to mono or expand them. We have a panning control for the close signals, and we also have a left and right invert. Again, there's a lock in the top corner. We then have the effects which were discussed earlier on in the video. Thanks for watching Spitfire Clips. Let us know if it was too long, too short, too fast, or too slow in the comments down below. Hit like if we answered your question and subscribe for more clips, tips, tricks and exclusive Spitfire content.